Hi there, everyone. I'm Jonathan Betts. I'm one of the anchors at CGTN, and I am very excited to be with you today because we are at a very special place. We've been traveling along the Yangtze River, the famous river in China, one of the largest in the world, talking about, on our part, the Three Gorges Dam. We're very, very close to that huge structure here that was built on the Yangtze River in the last 10, 15 years or so generated a lot of electricity for China, also did a lot of flood control, but it also brought some complications, especially when it comes to the environment. And that's what we're gonna talk about today, specifically fish. The fish of the Yangtze River, the Chinese sturgeon. It's a pretty fascinating animal. We are outside on the roof, by the way. I know it's hard to tell, but we're actually on the roof of an enormous structure. It is the Chinese Sturgeon Research Institute. Let's go inside and bring in my new friend here. We have with us Dr. Yang Jing. Come on in. Welcome to our little live stream show. We appreciate you being with us today. Yeah, hello. Say hello to everybody watching Hi. online. She is a senior engineer here at the Chinese Sturgeon Research Institute, and she's going to give us a tour. This is quite an impressive complex, I got to tell you. Not a lot of people get to come inside and see it like we're going to see it. So let's give you a look. Let's go inside. And as we're walking inside, tell us what we're going to be seeing here, Dr. Yang. Yeah, let's go. And that's it. I told you guys it's big. <laughs> this is a huge structure. What are we looking at, Dr. Yang? Now, the workshop is one of our breeding workshops. And we mainly capture the Chinese garden here. Because we're looking at, just so people understand clearly, these are huge tanks with Chinese sturgeon inside. inside yeah. How many tanks are in this big warehouse here? In total, we have 255 pounds with different sizes. 255 tanks. Yes. Yeah. With different sizes of tank and different sizes of fish, correct? Yes. And, and the size of the pounds ranges from 2 to 20 diameter. Ah, so that, and to give you some perspective here of how big these tanks are. And inside, yeah. we're going to go down a little bit further on and get closer to the water and the fish. But inside these tanks here, let's get close to the railing, in fact. Inside are mm -hmm. Chinese sturgeon. So let's talk about this fish. For people who have no idea what the Chinese sturgeon is, okay. it is an ancient fish. Yeah. Been here swimming the Yangtze River since the time of the dinosaurs. Yeah. Correct? Exactly. It grows to be very large, right? It can. Yeah, How big it, can they it get? It can grow up to four meters long. Four meters long. That's yeah, and twice as tall as I am. Yeah. That is incredible. That's like the size of a whale it's almost. Huge, yeah. It's huge. Uh -huh. But right now, uh -huh. the Chinese sturgeon is considered a critically endangered species, correct? Yeah. Why is that? There are too many factors. Uh, but first of all, I think uh, it's artificial, artificial activities like, uh, like the water dam. pollution. Water um, pollution, okay. And maybe dam construction. The dam maybe. construction, yeah. And also overhunting. And the fishing, overhunting and fishing. And shipping. And the shipping operation. Yeah. So all of these things together have interrupted the normal breeding cycle of the Chinese sturgeon. Yeah. And it's also to understand the sturgeon, you've got to understand how the sturgeon operates. So the sturgeon mm -hmm. is kind of like salmon, if I understand correctly. They, they spawn mm -hmm. in the ocean. Is that correct? Or they spawn in the river? They spawn in the river. And they grow in the ocean, live in the ocean. Yeah. So they live in the ocean mm -hmm. and then what? Once a year, they swim up the Yangtze River to spawn. Yeah. Is that correct? When they get matured. When they get mature, and yeah. that's where they spawn. But they can spawn in adulthood multiple times, correct? Because they they grow, they live such a long life. They can spawn repeatedly. Yes, maybe every four to five years. Every four to five years they spawn. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so you have this huge prehistoric fish that is really only found in China in the Yangtze River, correct? Yeah. They normally live in the ocean. They normally would swim up the Yangtze River to spawn like salmon do and then swim back into the ocean. Except China built this enormous dam <laughs> yeah. at a cost of, I think, 20 some odd billion dollars. It's one of the largest structures on Earth. 
it cuts across the Yangtze River, which is the third, I think, largest river in the world by water volume here. So, and the dam began operation, opened in the early 2000s, 2003, 2006, correct? Yeah. And that, had a, and that had a huge impact on the sturgeon's mating cycle. So no longer could the sturgeon swim up the Yangtze River. Yeah, it just uh, blocked the swimming route of the, of the Chinese sturgeon. So how, how damaging have all of these factors been on this species? You mean the dam building? The dam, the pollution you talked about, the fishing, all of that together. How, what kind of impact has that had on the sturgeon? Well, first of all, the fish cannot swim longer than before. Yep. So they have to adapt to the new environment. Yep. And the second, the pollution, the water pollution is very harmful for their growing. And they used to have tens of thousands of sturgeon in the um, Yangtze River. I think it was probably even more than that, but I think tens of thousands in the 80s, and now you and I were talking about this earlier, mm -hmm. there are less than 150 wild sturgeon in the Yangtze River. Yeah, the, the number of uh, wild resources declined dramatically this year. Yeah, mm -hmm. huge drop off. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's an, an overview of kind of the situation, mm -hmm. what the team here is facing. So what are you guys now doing to try to save the species? Well, we tried to protect the kind of sturgeon uh, through different ways. In brief, we tried to build a stable artificially breeding population. So this is a breeding operation. What yeah. we're looking at down here in these tanks are sturgeon that can mate, correct, to breed. Yeah, we can artificially breed them now. And we also carry out annual releasing activity. And what is that like? Tell me about that operation. We release uh, more, uh, about uh, one, okay, sorry. Uh, 10,000 fishes into the Yangtze River every year to increase the number in the wild environment. And we aim to restore the wild resources as well. Fascinating. So 10,000 fish uh -huh. that are bred here in this facility. Yeah are released into the Yangtze River every year. Yes. And how many of those survive? I think more than 35% of them can successfully swim to the ocean. Okay. And then you were saying that in recent years, though, you guys have noticed that the, the in fact, I don't know if we can see, yeah, sometimes, sorry, just to interrupt it, our conversation, because sometimes you can see these fish swimming up to the surface, and that yeah. one just did. In fact, I've been here now for a couple of days. Sometimes you see them jump out of the water in the tank, which is pretty it's special. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, hopefully, we'll get to see that. Um, okay. So you were telling me that in the last couple of years or so, you guys have noticed that the sturgeon are not swimming back up the Yangtze River to spawn. Not, not, uh, not swim back. It's just the number they swim back became smaller and smaller. So the, now, where it's, it's non-existent, is that? Correct? They swim back, but they not spawn. They're not spawning yeah. for some reason. And you're not sure why? Maybe the environment is not suitable for them to spawn. Like the shipping, the pollution, yeah. all of that. Yeah. So you guys, so what are you guys doing to try to solve that issue? Sorry. Sorry. How are you, how are you hoping to, to fix this issue where encourage them to spawn, to try to get more uh -huh. of the sturgeon to spawn? What is the plan for that? We tried to build our artificially population firstly. Mm. We have to make sure we have enough individuals to release. Mm. Uh, this is the first step. And okay. then we tried to continuously release them into the Yangtze River. So we ha and, and we hope we can improve the wider population by this way. Is the idea is to eventually release how many sturgeon into the Yangtze River? You mean in the future or now? In, in the, the future. future. We want to release about 100,000 fish every year into the Yangtze River. And right now you're releasing 10,000. Yeah. So you're hoping to jump from 10,000 to... Oh, no, to 1 million. To 1 million. 1 million. That's yeah, what I thought. Sorry. Okay, that's why I, I wanted to clarify. Uh, 
<laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> so, 10,000 are released every year now, uh -huh. and you want to get to 1 million Many. being released in a couple of years. Yeah, in 3 to 5 years. That's a huge jump. Yeah, quite a huge jump. Are you guys going to be able to do it? Well, we, well, we try to build more pond to breed the lovely and juvenile sturgeons, okay. and we also try to build a big pond for parental fish breeding. So we, uh, we uh, <laughs> So you're really going to scale up this operation yeah. and build more tanks and breed more fish. Yeah. Will that work? Is that the solution? I think it will work. Why? So, so the, uh, before two years, we don't have so many pounds here. Okay. And the, the number we're releasing every year is, is very small. Mm -hmm. But in recent years, we have uh, built so many ponds, so many constructions, and we can see that we, the releasing number every year has already comes uh, already comes up to um, one ten thousand years, ten thousand sturgeons a year per but, year. But the trick is to try to get the sturgeon to breed and live without your help, correct? So that you don't have to do this, have this operation, and breed them. Yeah, I think they cannot survive well in the wild environment. Well, that is my the ultimate question. What would happen if you guys were not doing this work here? I think they will disappear. They would completely maybe. disappear. Yeah. They would become officially extinct. Yeah, maybe. So how hard is this job for you guys to try to save this species on the brink of extinction? Well, it's quite... A it's a quite a, it's a tough question for me actually. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't. It goes way above our pay grade, I know, but <laughs> it's a lot. It's a hard. It's a hard thing to do, isn't it? It's a lot yeah. of work. <laughs> yeah, I can see that uh, the protection of Chinese sturgeon is quite uh, important mm -hmm. because uh, it has a great. Uh, uh, you have mentioned that it has lived quite a long time yeah. on the earth. Yeah. So it has it have has a great value of uh, scientific research, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. such as uh, biological evolution, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. geology, mm -hmm. or geom geomorphology, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and also transgression, and so on. So it has a, so it has a great in, um, scientific value. Ooh. This is the most important. There is a lot of value to this fish, and I know that uh -huh. the, you guys, or the government, I should say, has mm -hmm. been trying to save the sturgeon, I think, since the 1980s, correct? Yeah. So how has, how has that work changed over the last 40 years or so? Mm, I think if we don't relieve them from 1980s, it might be already extinct now already in the gone. wild. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And so... Considering that this is something that the government's been working on since the 80s, uh -huh. is this working? Is this program working at trying to save this fish? By releasing Chinese sturgeon, mm -hmm. I think it, uh, it's working, but um, we don't have exact uh, data to confirm this. Mm. Because the fish uh, we released before in the beginning years, they are quite small and not tagged. So we cannot track in them these this years, but I hope, I think and I'm not, I'm sure we can track in the fish in the future with our tag the fish. So, in, when did you guys start? And to be clear to the audience, what she's talking about is that now, when you mm -hmm. release the sturgeon, mm -hmm. you put radar tags on yeah. a few dozen of them, correct? Yeah. And so with those tags on the fish, you're able to track them to see what they're doing. Yeah, where they are swimming, how they are migrating, mm -hmm. and uh, how they living in the level of the water, mm. maybe on the bottom or in the middle part. Okay. Or, Close to the yeah. surface, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what has that information told you? What, have you? what have you guys learned since you've started tagging these fish? Uh, you mean the scientific data or...? Yeah. Okay. Is there uh, anything that surprised you? Yeah. Uh, after our releasing activity, mm -hmm. according to our monitoring data, we mm -hmm. find that nearly 
mm, the fish can swim back to the ocean. The fattest fish swim back to the ocean okay. can be finished their migra migrating mm -hmm. in one month. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that surprised you? Yeah. Why? I never thought they can swim so fast. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe uh, I think they might be want to um, play or <laughs> yeah. swim in, in the Yangtze River. No, but they get going, huh? They, yeah, they just uh, directly swimming into the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> Straight to the ocean, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And what else did you learn from this program, from the monitoring program? Well, I think uh, it's a uh, it's helpful for for us mm. to monitoring Chinese garden using like a sonar tags yeah. or uh, and also mic micro satellite tags, uh, and they can tell us how the fish how the fish is the behavior. Mm. How they, how how they are hunting other food mm -hmm. and eating. How they eating. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How they moving. Mm -hmm. And it it will give us more data, more scientific data to uh, adjust our protection, protecting ideas. So you're still learning. You're still trying to come up with new ideas and still learning about. This fish, but also how to protect this fish. Yeah, we we still learning, we still improving. <laughs> <laughs> learning and improving and changing and adapting. Yeah. Um, and to give you guys an idea of just how big these tanks are, so you know I'm almost two meters tall. Uh huh. And I guess the the water goes all the way to the bottom. I guess yeah. so. They're in pretty deep water. Yeah. Right here. Mm -hmm. um, to give you an indication of just how big the tank is, so you can get an idea of how big the fish is, because it's a it's a big yeah, fish. Yeah, we, we can have a close look. Yeah, let's go yeah. up there and take a look inside. Let's peer over the edge, see what we can see. They don't really swim to the surface. I've noticed that often, so it can be hard to spot them. But sometimes they'll come up to say hello. And these signs, well, maybe not this sign, but a lot of these signs talk about when the fish were born, right? So, yeah, maybe we can go that pond. Which the, one? The number ten. Number, number ten. 10 you want to go to number ten? Yeah. We All right, have let's a, go to number ten. We have biggest. All right, let's go to Chinese number ten. Garden there. So the big, the big boys are over in, in tank ten, huh? The big. Uh, the big second fish. generation fish. Second generation fish. So yeah. these are the bigger ones. Yeah. All right, let's go take a look at it. So this, I can tell by the sign here that these fish were born in 2009. Yeah. So okay. already 12 years old. 12 years old. All right. Uh -huh. Which makes them about middle age, right? When it comes to um, yeah. sturgeon. I'm gonna let you get on this side of me. Well, the, All right. The hello. water is not clear. Ni hao. Let's see. Can you come up and say hello to us and get on CGTN, Mr. Fish? You ever name the fish? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's F2. <laughs> All right. Not very scientific, I guess. <laughs> well, let's see here. Earlier, we did see a pretty big sturgeon. Oh, there he we is. We go one there. Come on up, brother. Come on up. Let's see if he'll come up to the surface. How many are in this tank? How many fish are in this tank? 25. 25. There's 25 sturgeon in this tank? Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. OK. And how long will they live in this tank? Has this fish been in this tank since 2009? Yeah, when they get mature, the way we will select, select some of them for artificially breeding. Okay. And some of them will be selected for releasing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, there it is, right there. Boom. Oh, yeah. Whoa. I mean, it is, I hope we got that on camera. It is big, y'all. Yeah. It looks... I mean, it looks to me like a shark. I mean, they're so big. They look uh, yeah. like the scale, a little bit, a little bit like the uh, scale yeah. of a shark. Hey, it's very huge, and it has uh, five attractive foam plates around its body. Really? Yeah. Mm, you can check it. Let's see. Oh, there it is, oh, right here. there. Mm -hmm. One line on the dorsal yeah. part. Yeah. Two lines on the lateral part. Wow. Lateral size yeah. and two lines on their ventral side. Really cool. Yeah, and the, the bone plates can support its huge body. 
Okay. And also can sense the direction of water flow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's a fascinating animal. Now, people don't really eat the sturgeon, right? Let's continue walking along. Yeah. It, people, when people were fishing for the sturgeon, the main reason was for the eggs, right? It's the caviar that that people mm -hmm. like from this fish. People don't really eat the meats of the sturgeon, do they? You mean before or now? Before, before. People eat them. They do eat them. They, okay. They also eat the meat and also uh, produce the caviar. Yeah, the caviar. Uh, That's what I thought was the main attraction uh, yeah, of this, right? Yeah. The caviar. It's the uh, eggs that people yes. really want. But now, commercial fishing it's has forbidden. been banned. It's yeah. forbidden. Yeah. So people cannot fish these any longer. It's another, another, no, they can't. another effort here to try to protect this fish. Yeah. Um, all right, let's see what else we can see. Uh, let's take a look at this tank, I guess. I was really hoping to show you guys a really good shot of this fish. Because again, something to keep in mind if you're watching at home, this is a fish that may not exist. I mean, it's on the edge of extinction. If not for your work and the work of your colleagues here, this fish would not exist. So it's kind of special, I think, to really take a moment to appreciate this animal and appreciate what we're seeing. Did you, when you joined this operation, what did, um, what drew you to this? I mean, why did you decide to work with fish? Well, I'm happy to be a member of a researcher. Yeah. To protecting them. Yeah. Because uh, my major was biology, mm -hmm. and I know, also people know that every living thing on this planet has its own place for the balance of uh, nature. Mm. So, in my opinion, protect them is protect the human beings. <laughs> I like that. You protect them, you protect humans. Yeah. It is absolutely accurate, isn't it? I think we're all kind of learning the role of climate change and, and you know, in our planet's fate and how we are all kind of, and we are definitely all connected to nature and rely yeah. on each other. Yeah. And we need to really respect that more. Yeah. The so protecting what work for the Chinese student is not just to protect the lives of this kind of space, we also protect the entire ecosystem a great point yes yeah. and, and that's also i think illustrates how tricky it can be to try to protect this fish this is in some ways you can't just breed the fish and release it it's yeah. more complicated than that because yeah. of how they mate how they spawn how they travel so it's a really tricky job here isn't it yeah exactly there are two many factors included inside. Including in that. Yeah. And so, what do you think about working here? I mean, for you personally, I want to get back to what we were talking about just a couple of moments ago. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you studied biology. Yeah. You came to work here. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about this when you come and you look at this facility and look at all the effort being spent to try to save this fish? What do you think? Well, at first, I was shocked by the huge body of the sturgeon. <laughs> yeah. Because in, when I was a student, the fish I started was only really? with small Little sizes. Really? Small. Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Ah. Like zebra fish or stickleback fish. <laughs> they only have smaller size. But okay. when I came here, yeah. the fish was so huge yeah. and the tanks are also so huge, so I was shocked <laughs> at first. And, or, and I also realized how huge work I will experience in my, in my research. In your research, in your yeah. job, yeah. yeah. Why do you say that? Was it, is, was it a bigger job than you expected? The life the lifespan of the Chinese started quite long. Quite long, yeah. 20 so years or so, yeah. The research cycle mm -hmm. for the protecting of this fish mm -hmm. became long. <laughs> also. <laughs> so, that's yeah, a good point. so if I want to check, uh, for example, if I want to check one kind of uh, hormone or something else, mm -hmm. whether it can work 
for their breeding. Mm. I have to inject them when they are small, small, or, or for you, for example, when they were juvenile or yeah. even larvae, yeah. I have to inject the hormone inside. But I only can see whether it works after 14 or <laughs> even more years later. <laughs> So it's quite hard. I imagine uh, that's a good point. It's like watching children grow up. I mean, it's a huge <laughs> yeah. investment of time because uh -huh. these fish take so long to mature and grow. Yeah. Do you feel do you feel kind of a connection to them since you do spend so much time with these fish and watching them grow from little bitty fish to these huge animals? Well, I love them during my research. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Uh, we're stopping here at a tank and I want to see if we see anything, but I guess not. No, I'm, try I'm trying to see what the camera's seeing and no. So we're going to go further down, y'all, because if we can, I want to give you a quick perspective. Hold on. I want to show this, this shot right here, from here to here. And I don't think they, we also, well, that's not going to happen. The, my photographer doesn't speak English and sadly I don't speak Chinese, but I wanted to show the size difference between the okay. big tanks and the little tanks and you can only get that from this angle but whatever we're going to walk to the smaller tanks so we're walking away from these big tanks and we're going to the smaller tanks where the baby sturgeon are in correct yeah juvenile sturgeon so why do you keep them separated well you can you mean have already noticed that the materials of the tanks are different they are concrete tanks yeah. and they are fiberglass okay tanks. and why why does that matter and for the concrete tanks, we use the flowing water system. Okay. And for the fiberglass, we use the circling water oh, I system. See. Because in these big tanks, this is Yangtze River water yeah. coming in here, right? Yeah. So it's coming straight from the river into these tanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and we use the circulating water system to capture juvenile sturgeon because yeah. we can monitor them conveniently. Got it. Because right. also the water temperature matters to this yeah. fish, correct? Which is another example of how these sturgeon are, maybe delicate is not the right word, but how there are a lot of considerations for this. And part of the many reasons why the sturgeon are struggling is because the water temperature in the Yangtze River has gotten hotter. Yeah. And so how, how does that play into the health of these fish, the water temperature? If the water temperature is too high, the fish will not want to eat. Really? Yeah, they will stop eating. They'll stop eating? Yeah. That's an odd thing. Really, do, you, do we know why? Uh, we, we think it might because the, the digestive system was influenced by the water temperature. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, and like is... some uh, digestive enzymes. Okay. The activities of the enzymes will be losing in high water temperature. Got it. Okay. So which? So I got some fish food here. I grabbed it off the ledge here. Um, yeah. You which, can feed them. Which one should we yourself. go to? What do you recommend? Which one do you like? How about number six? Number six, that's yeah. our lucky winner. All right. Yeah. So let's go to tank number six. Why are we going to this tank? What's in here? We have a uh, young uh, double eye sturgeon. We have double eye sturgeon here. Oh, wait, how old are these sturgeon? They are two years old. Two years old. If okay. you want to feed a Chinese sturgeon, you can move to the. So this is not a Chinese sturgeon, it's a different kind of sturgeon? Yeah, it, they are double eye sturgeon. Interesting. They Another. Look Sturgeon living in Yang in the Yangtze River. Okay. Mm -hmm. But they are not as endangered as the Chinese sturgeon, are they? Or are they? No. No. Okay. Uh, better, but they also endangered. They are endangered. Okay. Well, let's see the chi So this is Chinese sturgeon. See if we can tell the difference. I'm not sure if I can tell the difference. Um, well, this in the water is. Let me check. Harder yeah. to see in this one because the water is moving yeah. so quickly. Yeah, Chinese sturgeon. This is Chinese sturgeon. What about this other oh. tank here in the sunlight? Are these Chinese sturgeon as well? What are these? No. These are not actually, are they? Double eye sturgeon. 
Chinese that are here. I can tell the difference because this one has the white ridge, and I don't think the Chinese. The shape of their oh no, they do have bone it. plate is a little bit <laughs> different, and the number of their bone plate is also different. Okay, well, can we <laughs> let's feed some fish? Can we feed this? The, yeah. This is Chinese surgeon. Can I feed them with this? Of course, they, it's their lunch time. It is lunchtime. Yeah. So let's so let's see if this does anything. I don't think there's going to be much you of a can reaction, feed more. folks. But you we can, can feed more. Well, let's just start with a little bit. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to overfeed them. Um, oh, they actually are coming to the surface here, or at least coming to where the food is. I expect, like, you know, sometimes when you feed fish, they kind of come all the way to the surface and get really excited. These fish don't seem no, to be all that interested. No, they won't. They are fancy fish. <laughs> and their mouths were below their head, so they cannot swim up and eat food. They just can eat them on the bottom of water. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. So that's why they don't jump up and to the surface. They have yeah. to, it has to wait till it sinks yeah. to the bottom. Okay. And this, uh, this fish food does have a pretty strong smell, I gotta tell y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, interestingly, they don't have teeth. Really? They don't have, it looks like they would have teeth, but they don't have teeth. They don't have teeth. Okay. They have special mouth, which can scale up and down. Okay. Just like a telescope. Really? Yeah. Okay. And they can scale it up and down as well. Oh, wow. What do they normally eat in the wild? They usually eat um, basic fish or shrimps. Fish and shrimp, okay. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And we usually train them to eat those things before we release them. Because we are afraid of that they cannot <laughs> eat in the wild environment. So we usually train them before they go back to the young. So you have to train them basically how to hunt, I guess. Is that, is that correct? I mean... Before you release them into the wild, you have to train them to eat fish and shrimp. Yeah. And what do you do to try to train them to do that? We, we are afraid of they cannot uh, successfully survive with, uh, without commercial food. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we don't have the commercial food in the Yangtze River. Right. They, uh, only fish, small fish and shrimps swim, uh, exist there. Yeah. And if they cannot eat them, they will starve until death, maybe. So that's why we need to train them before we release them. So you train them to get away from the, the actual fish food and towards fish, other fish shrimp yeah, so we, they know how to survive in the wild. Yeah, we ha have the duty to keep them alive in the wild. It's a, quid it's a pretty big job. Let's walk around a little bit more and show us some more things here. So this is, these are all, well, what do you want to show me? What do you think is most interesting in this area here? Well, if you want to see juvenile sturgeon, I can show you okay. there. Okay, let's go do that. Let's okay. go see the juvenile. So they're even smaller than this. Yeah, the only half a year old. Half a year old. Oh, so they're brand new. Okay, they're only a few months old. Yeah, they, they, oh. were, born, they were born in the April this year. Born in April. All right, so these are the babies, yeah. the baby sturgeon. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at those and see how cute they are. This they, they are juvenile double rice started and okay. we breeding Chinese started in our another base. At another place, okay. And Got it. So uh, we already successfully breed uh, one branch before Ooh. this festival. Oh really? Okay. Uh -huh. And there they are. There's a lot in there. Look at them. Okay. These are mm -hmm. the little baby sturgeon. Mm -hmm. Little bitty. Yeah, they are cute at this stage. But they are, <laughs> I mean, a little bit shocked, make me shocked when they grow up. <laughs> <laughs> and then they get big. Yeah. How, how, how long does it take for them to, um, how long does it take for them to get to an adult size, like to grow to a bigger size? Uh, how Like how many size? years does it take for them to grow into the, to get big enough where they can go into the bigger tanks? Well, as you think, the fish 
on that tank, that on, in that big tank, were 12 years old. 12 years old, okay. And the fish you just feed yeah. was two years old. So in the wow. uh, first year during, during their development pattern, they grow very fast. Okay. But after they become adult started, the growing speed will become slower, Got slow it. down. And when do you guys put the tracking monitors on them? Um, when when do you guys do that? Well, I can show you in that picture how we tag fish it. No. So, but, but like, how old is the? Um, how old is the sturgeon when you guys do when you guys do put the tracking monitor on them? Is it only when you're about to release them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we usually tag them before we release them, mm -hmm. and we will we are releasing every individual before we release them. Everyone will get some sort of monitor on them to at least warn fishermen not to take this sturgeon, but. A few dozen get the sonar one that's yes. tracking in real time. Yeah, for okay. T tags, DNA tags. Yeah. Uh, every fish has these two tags, okay. including smaller, and small, and big ones. Okay. All right. Well, let's um, let's take one more look at one more tank to see what else we can see in here. Um, mm. Oh. And yeah, these are pretty I big, actually. Yeah, I think they might uh, three to four years old. So tell us, why is it important to protect this fish here? People would say, listen, the mm -hmm. dam was critical. We needed the dam mm -hmm. uh, to power homes, to protect against floods. Why do we need to go through all this work to protect this fish? Well, actually, I think there are too many factors and too many reasons why we have to protect them. And we also also discussed the, them before. Mm. In my opinion, mm. I think there are two important reasons why we protect them. First of all, we also, we both mentioned that they exist since the dinosaur time. So it has been, and according to some researches, it has. A, been on the Earth for nearly 140 million years. Unreal. Yeah. So it, million years yeah, old. Yeah. So it has great value for scientific research. This is the first thing important. They can know how the uh, space, how the biological evolution or something else happened in the, on the Earth. And for the second one, uh, it has great. Uh, it has a great roles on the keeping balance of the nature. Mm. So it might be the uh, in it might be the most uh, not most but it <laughs> it might be an important part for for our ecosystem. Because it shows as an example that if this health if this fish is healthy and surviving than a lot of other species, then the river is healthy and surviving. Yeah. And right now this fish needs help, which is why you're here doing the work you're doing. Yeah. And I want to thank you for taking the time to show us this operation. It's quite a big operation. 10,000 fish released into the wild every year from this operation here to the Yangtze River. Mm -hmm. They're working hard to bring the Chinese sturgeon back from the brink of extinction, and we hope you're work continues. You know, thank you for your time. Dr. Yang <laughs> Jing, one of the researchers here, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you. I hope you had a great time I had here. a great time. It was a lot of fun hanging out with you. I appreciate that, talking about fish. Thanks so much, Dr. Yang. And that's going to wrap it up for us here. We're going to have much more ahead on CGTN, both online and on air. I'm going to be doing stories about the Chinese sturgeon and the three gorgeous gans. So make sure to tune in for that in the coming days and weeks. That's all for now. Back to you guys. Thanks so much.